Hi and welcome to this creative session with Affinity. I am Marit van Eklenburg, also known as Marco by Marit, and as you might have guessed, I mostly do macro photography. Now, within macro photography, there are a lot of fields that you can specialize in. And I specialize in photographing bugs. I make bug portraits, sometimes spiders, but that's basically, yeah, that's basically it. And there's a whole world out there that is incredibly vibrant and there are so many colors and details that I've never seen before. It's such a wonderful experience. So I'm going to show you how to adjust these photo, how to, uh, photos and how to focus merge them and basically how to get the most out of your uh, macro photography. So let's take a look. Oh no, wait first. First I have to explain to you a little bit what exactly focus stacking is and how does it come together? So I focus tag only live insects in the field and I'm gonna take you to the field for a little bit, do a bit of a wardrobe change and I'll show you how that's done and then we'll get to the editing process. Let's go! For my images I often use a technique called focus stacking. You take a series of photos that are all exactly the same except for one thing. You only change the vocal plane. Now what does that do? Um, you have the sharp part of your image and you make sure that the next time you take the same shot the only thing you change is the point that is sharp. So for instance if you have a hoverfly and you take just the tip of their snout or of their eyes then this part is in focus. Now make sure that the second photo I take this part is in focus and so on and so on and so on and so on. I can take 50 photos, I can take 10 photos, it doesn't really matter, as long as the end result is something that I am happy with. So you can go, you can stack as deep as you want, and also you have to find a subject that is willing to sit still for long enough to be able to do this. Because the slightest movement, either by me or the insect, will make it a lot harder to edit and maybe even sort of impossible. So if it's wiggling with its antenna or it's moving around with its paws, uh, every time there will be a different part in focus. So it's very hard to get that final image. So if you have that subject that is so cooperative and well, uh, well in focus and easy uh, to get like a nice composition with it, then you might get something like uh, the first example I'm going to show you. But if your model is yeah, a bit more moving around, then you might need a little bit more um, editing tricks. And that I will show you in Affinity. So before we start taking a look at my editing process, I wanted to show you a few pieces of my work. Um, this here is a wasp, and it almost seems to be smiling at me, which I absolutely love about this portrait. And this is a stack of, I think, about seven photos. And right here we have a iris weevil which is sitting on an iris and it has that nice purple colors also in the background which i love to do i love to play with colors and affinity gives me the ability to really make them uh, make them pop then we have a nice bumblebee over here covered in pollen yeah, some very good details you can count the hairs it looks really good, but this one was moving around a lot while I took the shot. And um, luckily that wasn't much of a problem, but it did take me a while to get it uh, to get it just right. Right here we have a fungus weevil, kind of goofy looking weevil. And so here there are a lot of details. And over here we have a damselfly covered in dew droplets, looking kind of cheeky, in my opinion. And um, this is the damselfly we're going to be editing today, but not with this blue background, but with the orange background. Okay, so I want to get started. I choose a file, say new focus merge, please add. And there we go. I select them all, open, 
and I click OK. So what Affinity is doing right now is going to align all the images properly and put them together into one image. Now, most of the times, um, depending on how well you took the images, it will align pretty nicely and there will be very less blur or movement visible. Um, so that is a little bit depending on how well you took, uh, took the photos. But as you can see, this cute little damselfly was actually moving around a bit while I took the shots. So it does need a little bit of extra editing. It's almost done. Focus merging. Okay, so here you can see that it sort of grew an extra paw. Uh, that is something obviously that I don't want. We're not creating any new insects over here. We're just trying to portray them in a way that is natural and good looking. So how can I get rid of this tiny paw that is a part of my stacking process? Now what I can do, this is only one image that has that he has his paw over there. It's a male damselfly. And I can do two things. I can say, okay, you know what? I'm just gonna remove this photo entirely and not use it in my focus merging process. But sometimes this photo might have the paw. I can see, let's see if I can track it down. Oh, it's right here. It's photo number nine. Oh, I don't know what just happened. Okay, let's try that again. Okay. I don't know what happened there, but uh, I wanted to show you that some parts, as you can see over here, this little droplet is in focus in this photo. So I do want to use this in my focus merge, but I just want to get rid of this little part. Now, how can I do this? I have to select the photo where I think um, this is nice and well in focus. So let's try and track it down. I open my sources with uh, the K button. If I go over here, I press K and there are my sources. And I use the stamp tool to select the different layers and see which one has that paw in focus where I want it. So you can see all the different layers right here. See, and there is a photo that I don't want to be part of the stack because this is sticking out. But in photo eight, this is looking really nice. So let's see what happens. If I press this, I click make sure that I have the clone brush tool selected. And I start painting it in. So right now I have Photo number eight, and I start painting over this part, removing this little leg. And because everything in the photo is exactly the same as in the other shots, this is not a problem at all. Here there's some little bit of different color, making sure and I got it all. And we're in luck right now because this droplet is also in focus in photo 8. So I'm painting that in. And I just got rid of that extra paw. Now what you can also notice in this photo is all the sensor spots. <laughs> there are not as many as you might think right now. It's because of the focus stacking and the lining that it did. Um, but there are definitely a few there. Um, and I can get rid of them in a few ways. I can just select a layer where I, 
only see only one is visible and paint that in but you can see what happens this is not really the desired effect that I wanted to have so I'm gonna press command Z and undo it and use this tool the inpainting brush tool as you can see in affinity I only like to use the buttons and functions that I use often and all the other clutter all the tools that I'm not using are just not visible over there so I'd like to work a bit clean okay so I select with the inpainting brush tool I let it go and as you can see the AI affinity took care of it very nicely better than just selecting one layer I do the same for these spots over here and these ones As you can see here, very slightly, very few as well. And in the top over here. So the inpainting brush tool really takes care of that nicely. And it doesn't only work for like sensor spots, but also like small debris or maybe a grain of sand is there or like a tiny hair that I won't I don't want to be seeing like for instance if I don't like this hair hanging right here I can just slightly cover it with the inpainting brush tool and it's gone now what I do want to show you is this little antenna right here this bothers me I can just let it sit there and ignore it because you hardly even see it in the final product but you know you want to have something nice looking and especially if you want to print it you want everything every detail to look nice and proper so I'm selecting the layer right now in the sources to see where it is in focus so probably number six is best but I'm gonna take a peek at number seven no it's a bit darker and out of focus you can see this part is in focus for number seven but number six right here looks good okay i'm gonna select it and just do the same as i did before make my brush just a little bit smaller by using the bracketing tools on my keyboard I think it's called the bracket okay and I'm going around it like this okay so at least there's no haloing anymore like the little part that was out of focus showing here that is gone but what did happen is that here this is now showing more orange and it looks like it's just a little bit out of place here so I'm gonna fix that by doing the following I'm gonna grab my stamp tool again I think this is uh, this is probably my most used tool in affinity always and I'm gonna use instead of global I'm gonna select current layer I'm gonna select the part where I think it looks good right over here make it just a little bit smaller and paint it over so you can see that it will blend a little better in the background this is just one way of doing it you have to make sure to hold the option key click right here this is my sample I'm gonna paint it in right here Make sure to go around the little droplets 
And there we go. Okay, so if I zoom out right now, see it looks a lot better than it did before. That haloing is gone and this looks good. What I can also do, that's a different method, but I prefer this one, is uh, to click this in painting brush tool and to say, you know what, I'm gonna delete this one entirely and now affinity will remove this antler entirely for me what this does it already gives you a nice idea of how it could look i think i have to do it just a second time okay yeah i think it looks pretty good and now we're going to go over to that source panel again and we click this number eight. Oh no it was not number eight that was uh, that was the paw that was a stray i think it was six right ah yes there we have it number six so we select the right layer from the source panel click it again now it's gone and i slightly paint in our little antenna it's just a different method to create the same create the same effect but for me uh, doing it the other way I am more secure that I got everything from the antler like if I or the antenna see it's much thicker right here so I can just select it like so check the difference no it looks pretty good just here I saw that droplet so it's the same kind of effect you're getting. It's just the other one. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's comfortable for me uh, for me to use uh, to use that method. And I think it's also a little faster. But I have to say I didn't uh, I didn't time it or anything. Okay. So right now I'm going to crop this image. I I do it like afterwards. So I know that which parts are in focus are all properly taken care of. I choose the crop tool and I select this part. I do want the eyes to be aligned. So I am trying to make sure that it's aligned well and using different like where the eye starts and get it just right so I have enough room over here and enough room over there so that it's perfectly aligned okay I think we got it I press apply And there you have the cutie pie. So for extra adjustments, I don't use a lot. I already think it looks quite happy, colorful, and the way I would want to portray this uh, this blue feather leg. But I want to give it just a little bit, a little bit more color, just a little pop. So how will I do this? Um, I go over to my adjustment uh, tab. I click lighten. It goes automatically to white level 80, which is a bit too much. So I'm gonna go with 90. This is original. This is 90. And I have this 
preset color, um, this uh, HSL adjustment that I often use is called Orange Blast. This is too much, but I do it on purpose just to tone it down uh, from there. So this is at 21%. I'm going to see what it does at 15 or maybe 10%. Okay, I'm going to go in between. I'm going to go with 12. I think it looks quite nice. Just a little bit of extra color pop. Then if I want to exaggerate that just a little bit, I'm going to go with Complicate on Vibrance. See, it just gives a little bit of ex a little extra, a little extra to that. Those already vibrant colors. Might be a bit too much gonna go with 25% 26 okay now if we turn those off I'm gonna select them all you can see that it makes quite a bit of difference it's just to give a little bit of extra life to the photo so that is how I usually very simply um, adjust the photo a bit and that's after I've done the entire process of focus stacking, uh, cropping it the way I want, and only after that I decide to add a few adjustments. So this was an example of a pretty cooperative little insect, this blue feather leg. But not every insect is as still sitting and as easy to photograph as, uh, as a damselfly in the morning. Uh, so I found this ant lion and it was sitting beautifully on a small uh, persicaria on a flower. Uh, but it was, it kept moving its antenna around, like not just a little bit, like a lot. And I will show you this and how to fix that because every other part was nicely stacked. I took all the photos, all the layers, but those antenna were moving around like crazy. So I will show you how to fix that. I'm going to start a new focus merge. I'm going to add them. And here we have our beautiful end line. I'm going to select all the photos. Open. Let's go affinity. This might take a little while. We just have to wait patiently for affinity to do its job. These are 19 shots in total, but I sometimes also stack 50 or 60. Affinity doesn't have any issue with that. It just takes a while to align everything properly. And it's just not just alignment that it looks at. It also looks at the contrast at all the different layers in many ways to make like the best possible merge and it does that very well um, also i think in comparison to other programs i've tried many but i am very happy that affinity can uh, can do this in just in just one program. So I have all my editing, everything that I need is just in one program instead of me going from one software to the next. Okay, so you can already see a little bit what happened in this, uh, in this particular shot. It's really a funny looking creature. I think it looks like an alien. A boss alien. It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> it just takes a while, that's all. But you can already see this, uh, this antenna, how they moved around and ended up in this beautiful merge. Like Affinity can do a lot and it can do it nicely, but this is, uh, this is something that is, um, that is just a little bit too much. But you're forgiven Affinity, okay? All right, so how can we fix this? The head looks pretty good. 
there's some slight out of focus over here and overall it looks it looks pretty okay i will have to do some work over here but right now what i wanted to show you is how to fix this particular uh, part of the photo so we're not going to do the entire shot that would take too long but i'm going to show you how to fix these moving antenna say so we do pretty much the same thing again we're going to select the sources and go to our favorite stamp tool and what i want right now i'm looking for the photo that has the most of these antenna in focus so that i can use that as a base so which one that is of the 19 i just have to flip around a bit and see which is the best okay i think number six looks good yeah we're gonna go with number six so you can see this one is already almost completely in focus only lacking this little tip this is not in focus and over here we already have this in focus this as well until about here and here it's starting to get a bit more blurry and we have to select it from a different photo from a different layer so we're going to take this as a base shot and why particularly this photo not just because everything the most of the most part is in focus but also because this part is in focus over here and that is kind of important for the work we have to do later this just is easier if i can attach something that is has just a color in the background that has a soft background instead of having to mess around here uh, where i probably don't have this as well in focus in other shots as well so it's just easier to grab a photo that has this part particular in focus this is easier to change later okay so number six it is we have our beautiful waver <laughs> layered shot over here i'm gonna select just the six grab that clone brush tool and paint it in see how easy this is it's goodbye out of focus antenna beautiful all right so we're done no i'm just kidding here i have that out of focus tip of the antenna and here as well so how are we going to fix this the problem is photo two if affinity can show me please yes has this in focus but what happens if i use the clone tool to make this appear over there well it's over here so <laughs> that is going to be a problem for me because if i do this I still have those two antenna. So I'm going to press Command Z, undo that, and see how else we can fix it. I can paint it right here, take it out, use Command C and V, and put it over there. But I usually like to use a different method, which is to open this particular photo so this single shot in a different tab i have that right over here and here i'm gonna use my select tool select the tip just the tip and use command c and go over to my shot and then press command V. There we have our beautiful in focus tip. 
but it's not exactly the same. So we have to make sure that the angle is exactly the same. You can do that various ways. I usually change the opacity to like 50 or something so I can still see what I'm doing over here. Zoom in. And make sure that I align this pretty much perfectly. Since the angle is changed a little bit because it's moving around its antenna not perfectly in a 180 line, there will be a bit of difference, but that doesn't matter. As you can see, it's just very slightly changed. Okay. I'm gonna select it again. And make sure that we have the right position. Okay, so this is just playing around a bit. Sometimes it can help not to just use your mouse, but also use the cursors. Okay, so we're gonna put it back at 100%. And now you can see that you have this ugly blob surrounding it. But I did that on purpose because now I will use my eraser tool, put the hardness on 0% and remove this outer layer. And make that layer underneath it visible again. And maybe you've already noticed this, but this little white line is actually sharper on the merged photo, see over here, than it is on the other part that I just took. So I want that to be visible as well. So I just remove all of that, just the parts, not too much. All right. So here, this part is out of focus and now it's in focus. The same is happening right over here, by the way. See, I use this focus merge part and now it looks good. All right. Okay, so that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching this creative session with me. And I hope you feel inspired to go out and click some bucks yourself. If you want to follow me on Instagram, you can by going to at macro by Maritz. Maybe see you there. Bye.